Hi, everyone. This is uh, Scott Geitler. I'm the owner of Blue Water Photo and Blue Water Travel. And this is Mark Strickland. Hi, everyone. Uh, world underwater photographer, trip leader, extraordinaire, author of books and finder, founder of Nudibranch Species and all that good stuff. That's Mark I'm talking about. <laughs> um, thanks for joining our Fakarava presentation um really excited about about this about this talk and hopefully getting some of you uh watching to French Polynesia. Um it's going to be great. It looks like Adam's loading up the webinar, is that right? Mm -hmm. Almost there. Hang on. 89% All right. So are we starting the slides? Um, so any, again, thanks for joining this webinar and we have a lot more exciting webinars coming up. Uh, Mark will be giving a talk on the Andaman Islands on uh, April 30th, one of the most awesome dive locations in the world. Uh, we'll be doing Fiji and Raja Ampat and adding a, uh, uh, quite a few more destinations. So keep an eye on the, the bluewaterdivetravel.com website for more of these webinars. Um, real quick introduction to the Blue Water family. Well, Blue Water family consists of Blue Water Photo for all your underwater camera needs, Blue Water Travel uh, to book your dream dive trip, whether it's just you or you and a friend or a group trip, and the Underwater Photography Guide, which is the world's place to go for free underwater photography tutorials. Um, today, we're going to talk all about French Polynesia, but specifically Fakarava and Rangaroa. Um, there are a lot of other great islands and places to go, but we're going to really hone in on, on those two islands because for, uh, for people who want to dive and, and get close to big marine life, I, I think those are some of the two best, best places to go. Um, we're going to talk about when to go, which is pretty much any time. So that's an easy one to cover. What to see, uh, a couple of places we've stayed at that we really, really like. Um, and some trips we have going on, some specials, exclusive specials just for, just for viewers, just for people watching. And then we're going to finish with a Q&A session. So anyone watching at any time can type in questions in the chat on the left of your screen, and we will do our best to answer them, right? We'll answer yeah, them. Absolutely. Uh, one way or another, they'll get answered. Um, so why visit uh, French Polynesia? Why visit Fakarava and Rangaroa? I think this is a, a easy, easy one to answer, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, actually, it probably depends a little bit on the eye of the beholder, but I, I would say safe to say for anyone who appreciates pristine coral reef environments, an abundance of big fish and sharks in particular, uh, that's three great reasons to go right there. It also, uh, for me, I, I think has the additional appeal of uh, as yet really untouched by tourism, by and large. Uh, it's in many ways, I think, at that kind of golden phase where, uh, you know, the essential amenities and comforts are there, more some places than others, but certainly uh, everything that you need, and yet without huge crowds and all the negative sides of tourism. I agree with Mark, very untouched by tourism, especially Fakarava and Rangaroa, relative to most other places in the world, very few people, very few divers. Um, the visibility, this is the only place in the world I've, I've taken photos and not gotten any backscatter, no matter what you do with your strobes. It could just be pointed straight forward, you know, 100, 150 foot visibility, no problem, especially when the currents are, are leaving, uh, leaving the, the, the channel. Um, I'm sorry, when it's going and when you're getting the fresh ocean water. <laughs> Uh, when it goes the other way, sometimes the visibility can, can go down some, but amazing visibility, very warm water, um, definitely in the 80s. Um, never heard anyone complain about the, the temperature. Um, amazing place just to see sharks and mantas and barracuda and 
sharks and, and get close to them. And, and this is the only place that I've really known people to be able to get very, very close to sharks without baiting them. Um, there may be other places to do that, but I do not know of them as of this time. So it's it's really a unique place. And the um, the group responding, well, you'll see pictures of the group responding, but it happens once a year. And almost no one's known about it until recently. And it's just phenomenal and it builds up over a couple days and then the groupers are there and they spawn and all the sharks come and there's there's nothing else like it you just i had two different friends say scott you have to see it you have to see it i'm like all right and after the second friend told me i'm like you have to go there so as far as i know i was the first person ever to bring a group to see the group responding last year and wow it blew me away so um you you gotta go um this year this this july second on our trip is is the time to go um to see the that group responding is just it's worth it trust me yeah i, I would certainly agree uh, i was there actually just the week prior to uh, blue waters uh visit and uh, while we were not there for the actual spawning itself um, you know, even as the days got closer and closer, uh, it was obvious something big was about to happen because every day there are more and more and more groupers, groupers just showing up, dozens and dozens of them, every little sandy, uh, you know, channel in between the coral heads. It, it seemed like there couldn't possibly be room for any more groupers. And yet every day there were more and more and, and plenty of gray reef sharks accompanying them. And of course, there's a link there because, uh, you know, anytime there's an aggregation of that many reef fish, there's usually predators there that, that want to feed on them. Yeah. So, I mean, the actual spawning event all happens in one morning or one afternoon, but even the buildup over a few days is is incredible to see. And it's it's worth it, worth it going there for that. Uh, let's get to the next slide. So, um Really, any any time is good. This is truly an all year destination. Um, it's never really bad weather or rainy. You can get a little more rain in December or January, but um, we're we're talking, you know, small amounts. Um, you know, there is people go there on holidays. Um, uh, the French go there on on holidays. It's it's owned by France, so. During the holiday times, it can be a little more crowded, but it's it's still never it's never crazy, and it truly is uh, any time you can go anytime. Um, the water's always warm, the visibility's always good, and um, if you're going to pick any time, I, I'd say pick the time to see the group responding. If if you want to see a really unique event underwater with amazing marine life, which is. Uh, it happens on the full moon closest to July 1st every year. So if the full moon is like June or mid-July, it can be hard to predict. Uh, this year, it's very easy to predict. It's like right after July 1st. So this is a really good year to go and join our trip. Um, where is French Polynesia? It's middle of nowhere, middle of Pacific, uh, south of, of Hawaii, East of Fiji, um, it's right in the middle of nowhere. They have direct flights from from Hawaii, from Los Angeles, from Japan, from New Zealand. Um, it's uh, it's it's very very remote in a, in a good way. Yeah. Um, French Polynesia itself is quite a big area. Um, it's many islands, and it can take up to an hour to fly from one part of French, French Polynesia to the other. Again, that's a good thing. You have most of the tourists going to, to Bora Bora or Moria or the island of Tahiti. And then you have this archipelago called the Tuamoto Archipelago that's an hour flight away that is just pristine, untouched. And I, I kid you not, it is the most beautiful flight you'll ever take. You will cry when you get off the plane because the whole hour flight, you'll be looking down on the most beautiful scenery that you have ever even dreamed of. I mean, everyone's eyes were glued on the windows because you're just looking at these little islands and 
and motos, and you, you have to see it. Remember that flight? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, hopefully the airlines don't get wind of just how much better it is to have a window seat than not, because we'll probably end up paying a premium for them at some point. But uh, it, it truly is spectacular, and it's everything that uh, every vision that you might conjure up of tropical island paradise. I, I think this this is it in real life. Uh, and as you're looking down out of the airplane window, just all the different shades of aqua blue to the deep blue of the uh, the, the deep water surrounding these atolls. And uh, being true coral atolls, they have inner lagoons that are, are quite protected. And then kind of a narrow strip of sandy island in a kind of a circular or oval fashion. And again, just spectacular from the air. And at least as much so uh, once you're actually on the ground and under the water. Um. Yeah, this is probably the one time where where the traveling in the plane did not feel like traveling. It felt like part of the vacation because it was. Um, and again, another map showing showing the island of Tahiti in French Polynesia, and then uh, and then we have we have Fakarava, and then right next to it is is Rangaroa. They're both in the same archipelago known as the Tuamotos. And if you do one of our live aboard trips, which we'll talk about later, you're going to visit both of those, uh, several of those islands in that Tuamoto archipelago on, on one trip. Um, flying there, it's really great, comfortable, easy flight from, uh, from Los Angeles, about eight hours. I took Tahiti Airways and it was great airline, really nice um, direct flights, like I said, from Honolulu. Tokyo, New Zealand. Um, from New Zealand, it's like four hours. It's it's nothing. From Tokyo, it's a little further. It's it's eleven hours. Um, and again, once you get to Tahiti, it's like less. It's pretty much less than an hour in the air to get to Rangaroa or Fakarava. So it's um, the travel times are not bad at all, especially compared to some of the other exotic places like Raja that that people are talking about where it's like three times as much travel time. So uh, pictures, how many sharks are in, in this picture? Do you know? More than you can easily count. And that's a nice problem to have. I, I, I counted them uh, about 110 sharks. We saw, this is called the wall of sharks. I saw it on several dives. You saw the wall of sharks mm -hmm. too, right? Um, these are gray reef sharks, which, uh, it's not unusual to see, you know, small groups of them, you know, in a healthy marine environment, a handful here and there. I don't know of anywhere else has, uh, where you can see an aggregation of 100 or more gray reef sharks in a, concentrated in a small place like this. It really is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen underwater. Um, see some more photos. So in, so in Fakarava, the place we like to stay if we're doing land-based is at Tetamano Village, and it's a tiny resort right on the pass. Uh, the pass is a narrow entrance into the lagoon, and that's where all the diving is done. And the wall of sharks, the hundreds of gray reef sharks, are just going back and forth in the pass. So you can see them all the time. In fact, you can really just leave your room, jump in the water with a tank, dive down and, and see hundreds of sharks. But right under the pier, right under the restaurant where you eat, there's also black tip sharks that are always there. And you can see that in the photo. Um, they're there day and night. And that's what really made it the most special place I've ever stayed at is. I, I would certainly agree. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to place one above the other in terms of how exceptional it is. Uh, you know, for photo ops or just the experience, but I would rank the, the black tips and other fish life just right around the dock and the dive shop right up there with the, uh, the huge aggregation of, uh, of gray reef sharks is one of the most special things I've ever encountered. And in particular, from a photographic standpoint, uh, it's very calm, clear water, uh, oftentimes calm enough that you can do over or under splits. And, uh, and these uh, good sized black tip reef sharks up to a dozen or more just kind of milling around, uh, not the least bit afraid. And uh, it's, it's Mixed in with the other uh, gray reef sharks, there's also a number of other colorful reef fish. It, it really is a, like swimming in a big natural aquarium. It is like an aquarium. You can you can snorkel, you can dive, free dive, and you can go in and out all day. I mean, they're they're right there. I mean, there's a lot of times that I'd be I'd be taking a photo of a shark in like four feet of water, and I pop my head up, and I see my friends 
literally five feet away from me eating at a table. <laughs> and I'd be like, hey, it's awesome here. And I stick my head yeah. down. Um, that was a common occurrence that I've just, you have to experience yourself to really, really enjoy it. Um, here's some of the, the gray reef sharks on the wall of sharks. Sometimes they're, they're close. Sometimes they're further away, further away. There's always a lot of them. Um, again, here's from another dive. There might've been 30, 40, 50 in front of me. Again, you know, you can get close and light them up with strobes. You can get under them and get some contrast. Here they are again. If you get uh, below them, then they'll pass right above you. And if you can get near a wall and they go in between you and the wall, that's how you can get really close, um, like I did here. There's some more sharks. Um, right at the resort in like three feet of water, usually there's hanging out three or four large Napoleon rafts. Um, and uh, it's just great to, to, to swim with them and see these big fish that are always somehow keeping an eye on you, literally. I think it's also worth noting that these Napoleon rafts are not only incredibly colorful and interesting and photogenic, uh, but also in many parts of the world, sadly, highly endangered. They're, they're very sought after by the, the live fish trade. And uh, that's another awesome thing about Fakaraba. Uh, is that uh, it is very well protected and there are no foreign fishing fleets in there poaching these these otherwise rare animals. And uh, the animals seem to have very little fear of divers and uh, they swim right up and pose for photos. It really is a rare opportunity. Here's some of the groupers when they start aggregating. They don't they don't swim away so you can literally swim right up to them and 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 bump into them. Although I don't I don't suggest that. Um, <laughs> but there's there's thousands of them all over and, and, and they start aggregating more and more males and females um, in anywhere from 60 to 90 feet of, of very clear water right at the entrance to the pass. Um, the more groupers. Um, here's some more photos. And uh, Sometimes there's there's sharks swimming around or barracudas. Sometimes people have seen tiger sharks. We saw uh, them on trees. Very nice. Uh, lemon sharks. We saw a couple swim by. Um, eagle rays. We saw eagle rays a few times, which are are beautiful. And uh, I was lucky enough to swim up fairly close to to these rays. Um, I think. I think this photo was on one of the dives when the current was going out of the lagoon. So the viz drops down to maybe 30 or 40 feet. But it's sort of like a high adrenaline dive because there's still a lot of sharks and they're coming out of the the, the bad viz into the area of clarity and they're like right in front of you. And it all happens fast and it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, this is during the grouper spawning. The eggs, the grouper spawn, the eggs go up and then the fusiliers the fish you see there come and eat the eggs and then the sharks come in. So this all happens right in front of you fast. And it's, uh, it's, it's really something to see. Uh, again, group responding sharks flying by. Um, this is, uh, this is in Rangaroa. Rangaroa also offers some amazing, diving and shark encounters and one of their dives is a silver tip dive where there's silver tip sharks and there's also some colorful fish on that reef so as you can see you get the uh, a large silver tip shark and also these these reef fish right in front of you and it's quite an amazing um, encounter uh, here's a napoleon wrasse he's actually going to eat some food and his his mouth comes out to to eat the food, it's it's uh, it was just a very lucky shot, and it's it's quite amazing to see that. Uh, another gray reef shark coming by. Uh, dolphins in Rangaroa. A lot of times, there's dolphins that come quite close to you. They're they're well known for that, and it's it's really great to to see dolphins underwater, uh, bottling those dolphins very close to you in very clear water. Uh, they've been known to, to play and swim through divers. Um, they didn't do that with us, but we're, we're hoping this year that they uh, they do that. More dolphins. 
really quite rare to see bottlenose dolphins anywhere while scuba diving. By and large, dolphins and other marine mammals are very shy about divers' bubbles, but uh, these, this is a, a very nice exception. Uh, again, this school of fish is, is in uh, Fakarava, right under the resort, right under the restaurant, which is at the end of the pier. Um, it's a huge school of colorful fish, and you can just, I think I probably free dove down there below them and shot up getting the pier in the photo, and it's its really the closest thing to an aquarium I've, I've ever been in. Um, Fakarava has the nicest hard corals I've ever seen in my life. Uh, most of Tahiti is not known for its hard corals, and the corals are not that good. But in Fakarava, they're they're amazing, um, pristine. It's just it's just beautiful to swim over them. Absolutely. Uh, this is some fish in in Rangaroa. Uh, this is a, a a big aggregation of fish. This is actually right in front of the resort, in like four feet of water in in Fakarava. Uh, in Rangaroa, it's also you, you go through a pass into the lagoon, and um, at the end of our dives, after we enter the lagoon, there's a lot of times some nice schools of fish, uh, like these fish in, in Fakarava, you can photograph and hang out with. Um, this is a, a half in the water, half out of the water shot from from Fakarava, you can see the, the dive shop there, and you can see the sharks are always there swimming around in, in a few feet of water right in front of you. This is what I think of when I think of Fakarava, and uh, it really shows the, the whole the whole picture there at, at your base, which as I was describing, to be in a place where you can swim from your bungalow to you know scenes like this in the shallows, or about five more kick strokes, and you're off the edge of the, the drop off and surrounded by you know dozens, if not even hundreds, of sharks. It's, it's an incredible place. Um, this is basically the whole resort in Fakarava. It's at the end of the pier. It basically just consists of a of a restaurant and some tables, and you can see right underneath you have the sharks, the fish, the coral, and it's everything you need it is just perfect and and it's you don't have other divers or anyone else it's just you're very isolated in a good way in a way i, I think of it as kind of a, a time capsule there and of course nothing is permanent so hopefully it'll remain this way for a long time to come but i, I think truly there has never been a better time than right now because uh, it's easily accessible and yet uh you know for the most part the word is not really out about Fakarava, you know, you don't have, you know, crowds or parasailing boats or jet skis or, you know, high rise hotels or all the other trappings that seem to go along with a, uh, you know, such a beautiful area. Uh, it is just the natural beauty that's completely intact and, uh, you know, accommodations and amenities are, are simple, but all that you need. And it's, uh, again, I think a very rare opportunity to, to get to experience something like this. Again, here's uh, showing some of the sharks in the water and the, 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 the resort and restaurant at the end of the pier there. Um, and again, just um, one of my guests last year, uh, Manomi, is an amazing photographer, and she took some of these topside photos, and they're, they're stunning. Um, this is showing off some of the, the beauty of, 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 of uh, Fakarava on land. It's uh, just just walking around and hanging out is is, is unbelievably nice. Um, here's some of the bungalows you stay at. You're actually sleeping really right on the water, um, and you can see the fish out your window all night while you're sleeping, and, and hear the ocean. And it is just it's amazing. It, it's really amazing. Um, uh, so. There's there's two ways to do this trip. You can stay at resorts like our trip in uh, early July this year, and we also have a couple live aboard trips we'll talk about. But um, when we do it land based, we go to Fakarava and then we stay in Rangaroa. And in Rangaroa, we stay at the Hotel Mai Tai, which is very nice, luxury hotel, um, high end. Everyone will be very happy. Great AC, great beds, high end linens awesome food it's 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 a nice way to end the trip at a very high-end place um 
the dive shop is just a few minutes drive down the road. They pick us up. We do a couple dives, come back for an amazing lunch, go back to another dive, have a great dinner. Um, it's a, uh, they have a beautiful um, pool. They're right on the water. It's uh, it's it's a very very nice place. Um, uh, the French Polynesia Master is a liveaboard boat. It is the only liveaboard boat that does French Polynesia. It's new. It's it's a very high end boat. Um, the people who operate this worldwide dive and sail they have a very high. Uh, standards for their boats and uh we have a couple trips chartered on this this boat it's brand new it's going to be ready uh next year in may uh, and uh it's uh it's basically the the highest end boats of their of their fleet um called the master master of the boards um they're going to have a jacuzzi plasma screen tvs big indoor lounge area huge camera set up um, every room, of course, will have aircon and uh, and and suite uh, restrooms. Um, and there's going to be an upper deck, a main deck, and a lower deck. It's going to be really out of this out of this world. Um, so, just a quick overview of our trips. We do have a couple spots left this June 29th to July 10th. Uh, you can email me with any questions, Scott at BlueWaterDiveTravel.com. Seven nights in. Bakarava, four nights at the Mai Tai, and it's time. So we were there. Um, the middle of our trip is is right at the group responding. So this is really the best time to go. And we've we've uh, reserved the the rooms at the resort. Uh, we're also going to. Um, we also have two liveaboard trips scheduled on the French Polynesia Master to also go to Fakarava and Rangaroa. One is on December 7th, 2016, uh, and one is on July 2nd, 2017. So it's a little bit in the future, but we already have people signing up, and you're going to be able to dream about these locations for quite a while. So um, I recommend doing it, and uh, we also have some special prices for people who sign up early. Um, in fact, if you put the the 2017 trip now there's just a small deposit and you can lock in 2016 prices so just contact us for more details on that um and if you want to do any french polynesia trip at all on, on the, the live aboard uh, at the resort with us um or just on your own uh we'll give you a hundred dollars off only anyone who's watching this webinar um so ask us for details and uh, Mark, you have anything to uh, to add? Yes, I want to go <laughs> again. <laughs> again. <laughs> okay, we can uh, we can figure it out. Um, uh, I think uh, Mark and I will will probably be leading these trips. I know I'll be leading one of the French Polynesia trips. Uh, Mark will probably be leading one of the other ones. So, um, uh, if you have more details, just feel free to give us a call or email us. Um, Adam, are we going to do a uh, Q&A session coming up soon? Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, first one we had uh, was from Kim, uh, which was, would you recommend diving there for a novice diver? Um, I'm only open water and just recently certified. Um, I, I'd say that, that it's, it's, it's open to all levels of diving. There was, there is, um, both Fakarov and Rangaroa, um, they deal with a lot of, a lot of divers at all levels. Uh, the dive masters are very good. And, uh, I would say that's appropriate for divers of all levels, whether you're a newer diver or, or more experienced. Um, there was, uh, I didn't experience any, any crazy, any crazy conditions um, that, that I thought that the divers couldn't handle. Um, and again, the dive masters are, are very, very good. Um, so it's, it's warm water, it's clear water. Uh, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't experienced any, any really dangerous, really dangerous currents or anything. 
Yeah, I would, I would certainly agree with that based on my experience here as well. Uh, I think the only uh, probably caveat would be that uh, because the coral is so beautiful and pristine that it behooves everyone, not just beginning divers, but, you know, think about your buoyancy control and make an effort to stay up off the coral, but uh, nothing particularly challenging uh, in terms of conditions. Um, Adam, I actually see a few more questions here, so I can just answer them. Okay. Um, right here. Um, I see a question from, from Trent asking about uh, reef hooks um, on the trip. Um, we don't use any reef hooks, and you really don't need reef hooks. There was never a point where I felt like this is a crazy current. I, I need a reef hook. Um, everything was was it was you know fairly fairly gentle. Yep, I agree. And there are areas where uh, you can sort of tuck in, you know, and find a little sandy spot in behind a, a coral head or something, and tuck in with very little effort and, and keep your place, or uh, just sail along with the current as well. Is always a nice option. Yep. Uh, someone else asked about uh, about uh, using uh, using red filters and magic filters underwater, um, so you can get better better lighting, better color and lighting conditions. Um, and, and I have I have used used filters underwater here in ambient light, and it's it's great. You can get really really amazing really amazing shots and amazing video um, with really good color. Again because the visibility is, is so amazing. Um, uh, someone asked uh, about the, the language and everyone in all these places speaks English really, really well. So um, communication via English is no issue at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you speak French, you'll also be able to speak to people in French because most people there are, are quite, quite bilingual. Um, I see Pat asked, uh, um, a question about about current. Um, you know, current current can mean a lot of things. For some people, current means you're in a current and you're going with the current, which is one of the easiest dives you can do. Um, another another kind of current is where you have this strong current and the dive master is making you kick against the current, getting all out of breath. Um, you know, there are. Uh, there are some currents, but you're generally going with the current. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going against it. So again, I consider it quite easy diving. Um, you know, that said, um, you have a lagoon and then depending on the tides, the water flows in the lagoon and the water flows out of the lagoon. Um, and you generally want to be going when the water's flowing, although slack tide is great too. We, we do a lot of dives at slack tide when there's, no movement, just unbelievable visibility. So um, there is there is current, but I, I think it's generally not the kind of bad current that people think about when the, there are places and they're being dragged through this really heavy, strenuous current. Um, there was, uh, you know, on our trip, no no complaints at all. Someone else was asking about the the dive shops used. Um, all the resorts in Fakarava, they all have their own their own dive shop um, at that resort that that is used, and uh, Rangaroa has has several different dive shops. Uh, last year and this year, we're using one called Six Passengers, uh, which um, I really like a lot. I know the owner and the the DMs, and and they do a great job. We're really happy with with uh, the service they gave us last year, and we expect the same this year. Um, another person, uh, was, uh, saying about, you have to, you know, asking about weight in the luggage. Um, I had no problem at all with weight in the luggage. Uh, if you, uh, if you talk to Blue Water Travel, um, Blue Water Travel has ways to book your, your ticket, getting you an extra weight allowance. So, um, weight for me was not an issue. I was able to bring whatever I wanted. Um, and you can definitely rent gear there though. You can rent BCs, regulators, all the places have a lot of, of rental gear because a lot of the divers there in French Polynesia, they're coming from Europe on vacation. They're not bringing their dive gear. So rental is, is no problem. Um, another person, Pat was asking about ambient 
light photography? Um, is it a good place for ambient light photography? I, I, I don't know if there's a better place. I was going to say, I can't think of a better place. It is perfect for ambient light photography. Generally, uh, generally sunny skies and exceptionally clear water. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the healthiest reef and areas are right up in the shallows. So it's very, very well suited. Hmm. Um, someone, uh, Larry was asking about, about prices and, and airfare. And I, I will say that for any of our group or guided trips through Blue Water Photo, Blue Water Travel, um, the prices never include airfare because we have guests who come in from all over the world. Um, uh, but we're uh, Blue Water Travel is always happy to, to 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 book people's airfare for them or or give them a quote for airfare um, for any of these things. So, uh, Larry, if you want to know what the airfare is, you can just uh, shoot us an, an, an email and uh, and we'll, we'll let you know. But the trip prices uh, do not do not include airfare because we don't know where people are are flying from. Um, uh, someone else wanted to know what's going to be covered in the, the photo workshops and in, in all the photo workshops, um, people will go over, over composition, stroke positioning, settings, how to get great wide angle shots, uh, how to do ambient light shots, um, how to do video if you like, Lightroom post-processing. There's usually a different top topic every night. And there's also an image review where photos and video from the guests are shown and critique and people learn from every day. And sometimes the groups will all decide, oh, we want to go back to this place and I'll do a better shot or get a shot like such and such got. So it's very much a learning collaborative atmosphere. And on any of our photo workshop trips, um, which includes video, people always feel like they've, they've really, um, brought their photography and video to the, to the next step because uh, the trip leaders like myself and Mark and, and uh, Ron Watkins, who's leading this just July trip, really work closely with the guests on land and underwater if, if needed, if requested. So um, a lot of good information is covered. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. And uh, having been on a number of, uh, of these trips uh, in various capacities, I, I cannot think of any better way to quickly ramp up and improve your skills and knowledge while also having the time of your life doing it. It's, uh, it's one of our goals, especially on these photo expeditions, to strike that, that balance where, uh, you know, everyone's interested in, in improving and learning, but it is also a holiday. So, uh, and it's also, uh, we work in small enough groups that while there is some structure to kind of the, the common topics that pretty much everyone wants to uh, cover to one degree or another, we can also uh, very easily individualize it. We are flexible. I think it goes for all of our instructors uh, to not only cater to the particular highlights of that specific destination and some of the, the particular photo ops there, but also on an individual basis in terms of each participant's uh, experience and knowledge level. And, and it varies a lot. Uh, you know, you shouldn't think that you have to be, you know, a pro or a highly experienced photographer to, uh, to participate. Uh, certainly not. Uh, we typically have the full range of experience levels from people who've never picked up a camera before to those who've been doing it for years. And there's, there is something for everyone to learn there. And I think it, uh, you know, people come away, regardless of where they started at, feeling like they've learned a lot and had a lot of fun doing it. A couple more um, questions. Brian asked a question about the, the typical number of, of dives per day. Um, in Rangaroa, um, most of the places offer uh, offer three dives a day. Um, and in Fakarava, there's three dives a day off the, the boat offered. But the nice thing about Fakarava is you can you can be in the water literally 24 hours if you want because the most amazing diving is five feet off the beach right there where you are. So you can be in the water nonstop. In fact, uh, the trip I was on, <laughs> someone was in the water 24 hours. Laurent Ballista, who was there uh, with uh, Blanc Pan and the Pristine. Oh, he was there literally 24 Pristine hours. Seas expedition. That was one of his goals. And uh, and uh, as far as I know, a first. 
Uh, he was actually diving for 24 hours uh, right there on the, the house reef, right in front of the bungalows mm -hmm. and uh, saw some amazing things. So I don't necessarily recommend that uh, everyone takes that approach, but uh, it is certainly possible. Uh, Tia asked a question. She said, how deep are the dives and are the dives led by a mas dive master? All the dives are definitely led by a dive master, which is uh, supplied by the, the dive shops um, in French Polynesia. And how deep are the dives? Well, in, in Fakarava, you know, when you go right in front of the resort, you are you can be in three feet of water or you can be in, in 20 feet of water, but it's quite shallow. Um, in Fakarava, in the pass itself, um, you're generally between 30 and 60 feet deep, I'd say. Um, you can go deeper. You can, you know, go down to 100 feet if you want, um, but, you know, you don't have to. Um, again, in, in Rangaroa, I'd say the dives are, are generally between 20 and 65, 70 feet deep. And if you have the experience level, there are places that you can go deeper if you want down to 100 or, or even even deeper. So it's quite variable, but the groups generally are going to be 30 to 30 to 60 feet deep. Um, uh, another another question from JP um, asking about night dives, snorkeling. Um, macro opportunities. Um, we didn't do any, any night dives uh, when, when we were there last year, but night dives can be arranged. People have done the night dives, so it's not out of the question. Um, I, I wouldn't think of it as a, as a huge night dive spot, like say, you know, Philippines or, or Indonesia is. Um, and for macro opportunities, um, Leave it at home. <laughs> yeah, it's not that there aren't macro subjects there, and I'm sure some good ones, but that's not what is exceptional about the place. Yeah, I wouldn't say is, the macro is exceptional. Yeah, what is special are the, the bigger animals and the wide angle opportunities. So yeah. certainly from a photographic standpoint, I'd say that's what you should concentrate on. Yeah, there is not, uh, I wouldn't say that there's a large number of, of, of macro opportunities. There's definitely, it's definitely fish, um, but in terms of macro, it's... Uh, it's it's more limited. Um, uh, Larry asked about um, uh, about diving from the shore and uh, diving solo and a solo diver card. Um, we, we could talk about that more offline, but depending on your experience level, um, they have sometimes allowed people to go by themselves or, or sometimes just with, with one other person. So, um, yeah. so it is, it is, it is possible. Depending on your, on your experience level and, and certifications. Any other questions before we wrap this up? The last one was from Larry. Um, by the way, I really appreciate all of you logging in and registering to watch this webinar. Um, uh, hope to uh, hope to see or meet most of you on a trip at some time, myself or maybe with Mark. Hopefully so. Um, again, you can contact uh, contact us. Uh, Information is at bluewaterdivetravel.com or. I'm Scott at BlueWaterDiveTravel.com. Mark is at Mark at BlueWaterPhotoStore.com. Um, and I think that's it. Adam, do you have anything else for the for the webinar? Nope. Should we wrap it up? Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it.